okay good morning students today's topic is multi view deep learning uh this topic of unit 5 so what is multi view deep learning where it can be useful multi view deep learning is all about learning the features of an object from different perspectives uh, from you know angle 1 angle 2 angle 3 from various sides from left right top down this deep uh, learning on multi view representation can be useful for classification segmentation and reconstruction classification is uh, used for uh, classifying an object into different classes categorizing into different classes whereas uh, segmentation is uh, extracting a particular area from an image reconstruction is um, when an image is converted into some form you have to convert it back into the original form that is reconstruction in all of these tasks a multi view representation of deep learning is quite useful consider this object it is a chair this chair when you look at this chair by standing here if you are here how this chair looks is entirely different from looking at it from behind its look from behind is totally different from its look from the front and when you look at uh, this left and right also it differs it, its look you know a little bit in this case perhaps little bit in other cases uh, it might be entirely different from left and right side as well given this input which is a chair object look at here these are the different views this view 1 this is view 1 view 2 view 3 and so on up to view n this this side this this one that one and all of these views together forms this uh, complete object how to um, classify this object into its type which is here a chair using traditional approach is to obtain the features of every view view 1 what are the features of this chair from view 1 what do you see from view 1 what is the height what is the width what are the uh, other uh, components viewable from this a uh, view one side and look at view two again here different features like again height width color and other uh, components of this object all that is extracted the features these are known as features when you call something a feature of an object if it can distinguish it uh, from other objects or it can identify it uh, 
for instance uh, your role number would be the feature that will uniquely identify you in the class and therefore here you have to uh, find the features from every view for the those features are uh, uh, given as input to the softmax layer okay and then here uh, this is softmax and here this is linear classifier yc equal to uh, w transpose into xi plus bc this is linear classifier and this is softmax equation and here you have uh, to maximize what do you have to maximize uh, the log va value of p p is the predicted class let us say um, that uh, actually represent the uh, actual uh, object that you have to maximize maximize in the sense that you should uh, somehow uh, obtain its features and obtain the uh, classifier equation and uh, value from that classifier equation and then you have to look up um, for all the different classes when this object belongs to class J there might be another object table there might be another object uh, door whatever probability value you get of the highest that 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 uh, actually denote this uh, object and uh, in this uh, softmax uh, softmax provides the probability values um, for different classes that have to be uh, considered while classification so inherently here uh, you have to obtain the highest probability for the um, actual class and that is done through this all the process here it is given it is whether it is bath the classes bath tub uh, bed then chair desk dresser toilet these are the classes or the categories and this object belongs to any one class from this list all right here it is shown this in black color uh, yellow color what is shown in yellow color the class chair the reason being um, the value obtained from the softmax would be having a high probability for the class chair that that is the reason here chair is chosen this is the traditional approach moving forward to this uh, deep learning approach deep learning has got uh, a model known as uh, a network architecture known as a convolutional neural network this convolutional neural network is the one that automatically extract the features from an object there is this uh, cnn1 
which is a convenant for extracting image features. And this convenant essentially extract features from the several views represented here. For all the views, CNN would extract the features followed by the pooling Pooling is uh, an operation performed uh, on the output of uh, con a convolutional layer. In CNN architecture, the first layer is convolutional layer, uh, followed by the pooling layer. Generally, max pooling is used to perform a pooling operation on the filter maps or activation maps generated by convolutional layers of convolutional neural network architecture. Here, convolutional neural network generates features automatically by going through this image several times and then uh, performing a pooling operation. This pooling operation uh, takes this feature map, uh, let us say of size 128 by 128. And max pooling reduces this dimension by half. So it will it would be 64 by 64 after max pooling. After max pooling, the size would be reduced to 64 by 64, whereas before max pooling, size could be 128 by 128 to obtain 64 by 64. There is no other choice actually. Because to obtain 64 by 64, we have to have 128 by 128. E, and it's not necessary that this number is fixed. It depends on the dimensions of image being uh, provided as input to this model. All right, here. This is the first step. This this convolutional layer, first convolutional layer, obtaining the features and reducing the size, followed by another convolutional layer. This is convolutional layer one. This is convolutional layer two. In between, there is max pooling layer. In convolutional layer 2, whatever uh, the uh, output generated by max pooling is feeded as input into convolutional layer 2. This convolutional layer 2 also makes the data uh, or its input to pass through uh, various uh, you know filters because convolutional layer has got number of filters uh, with perhaps varying size of filters uh, it's the the size will not vary within a single convolutional layer rather uh, between the convolutional layer. Here you can have one size, here you can have another size. So here, um, convolutional layer 2 uh, would uh, extract some more higher level features. And finally, there is a softmax operation. This softmax will produce a probability value 
and the high highest probability value among the set of outputs uh, denotes the class to which the input image belongs and here in this case please observe here that chair has got the highest probability uh, indicated in this yellow color this one implies that apparently this one is a chair that was about multi view deep learning in its uh, original form uh, multi view deep learning being implemented from scratch by developing and designing a convolutional neural network there is another way to use this multi view uh, deep learning with the concept of uh, fine tuning fine tuning means taking an existing model and you uh, use using the weights of this model this model will generate excuse me through the training process this model have got its own set of weights right now these weights are fitted to a new model and that new model will try to learn by using the weights given as input rather than uh, by learning from its own training process of course there are various ways of using this fine tuning concept of deep learning i'm talking about here one of the kinds where you use the weights of another model and uh um, given give it uh, give them as input um uh, to the new model and then uh, use that those weights plus this model architecture new model architecture and this um, existing models weights combined together to perform tasks such as uh, Uh, classification all right um uh, mainly this fine tuning uh, is employed uh, for those tasks in which a uh, uh, huge data set is not available and there is a, a small data set therefore training a small data set Uh, would would may uh, or sometimes might not uh, yield uh, good uh, results and therefore this fine tuning uh, can be leveraged learning by fine tuning is uh, actually here Uh, given as pre-training, 
find a source of massive data with similar statistics. If you have got, say, 200 samples of data, in uh, pre-training phase, the first step is to identify a source or in other words, identify a data set, D dash, that has similar statistics with D, consider this to be D, and then use this D dash to learn the network parameters from D dash for D. Now fine tuning starting from the learned parameters on D dash. Minimize the network loss on D. Because uh, this model was already trained and perhaps might be performing better with good results, performance. And doing so, uh, parameters have been learned you know, that during the process of that, those parameters can be used by D in order to minimize the network loss. And this concept is actually known as transfer learning. Transfer learning is quite effective in practice. So many companies are using transfer learning. This is an example. Training network parameters are pre trained on image classification. There is there is this uh, VGG model. It is uh, already developed. And this model has got uh, certain learned parameters. Those learned parameters are, uh, you know, uh, fed to this model. This one, um, this model receives that and then uh, performs the classification for this object by using the learned parameters from VGG network. All right, this is that only. Okay, this uh, there is a reference uh, that the paper has performed this experiment. The, these these papers have performed the experiments for classification and retrieval. Okay, please go through, you will understand. Do you have any doubts in this concept of uh, multi-view deep learning? If not, uh, tomorrow we will uh, look at this applications of uh, deep learning, the first one being the vision. All right then, see you.